So you worked in the film industry for quite some time. Yeah. What, what did you do? 15 years. Yeah. I, wow. I was a that lighting technician um, based in Hollywood. Uh, my dad did it. My grandfather did it. Oh, so wow. Yeah. Third, third generation set lighting technician. Damn. Wow. What movies did you work on? Drop some names. Give me some of the, give me some of the goods. I worked on like all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I worked on, like a bunch of Marvel movies, like Spider-Man oh, movies. Uh, a lot of TV shows, um, RuPaul's Drag Race, Parks mm. and Rec. It was like, wow, these yeah. are like the name drops of name drops. Yeah, I got to, I got to do some cool stuff. Wow, who was your favorite person to work for, or like being on set with? And like you, you know, you mentioned some of these like movies, shows, and whatever. Those are like some big name stars. It's always really interesting being around people like of that stature, people that like still remain really impressive when you see them on a set like that. Who are some of the people that were like really cool to be around? Uh, Johnny Depp is really awesome. Like he's very social, and like the production crew tells you like not to talk to him because he just <laughs> won't stop talking to you. <laughs> Uh, yeah uh tom hanks was really cool uh, but i feel like on, what did you do with tom hanks what movie you're the coolest yeah uh, nick offerman uh from parks and rec was yeah awesome. like he would just like stand around and just like tell everybody like the idea like scrapped ideas for parks and rec and like they were <laughs> but yeah it, like there's definitely a lot of cool people and then like the people that you would think are cool are just like not at all were there conversations that you were having with people when you're like kind of rubbing elbows and shooting the shit like this that, that like professional wrestling gets brought up uh sometimes yeah but like uh it, it was funny because when i was in ring of honor um i was working on the show the neighborhood that's currently <laughs> on cbs i think uh cedric the entertainer show mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of the people that are on that show, a couple of cast members, uh, found out that I was a wrestler and they were just like super interested in that. Uh, this is like right when I got signed to Ring of Honor. So I had a couple indie dates and we had a, a show. There was a GC, GCW show in L.A. And uh, I was like, hey, do you guys want to come out to a wrestling show? And they're like, sure. What so, a show to bring them to. Come on out to so, GCW. MDK, baby. It, it, it gets better. <laughs> so... <laughs> They come to the show, and it was the show that David Arquette wrestled. Nick oh Gage. no! <laughs> Stop! Oh my God! So what? They must have freaked, being like, "Oh, we know David Arquette. Great, let's watch this." A cut to like ten minutes later. Yeah, I don't think that they realized that like David like almost died in the match, but like they were like, "That was insane!" Like I can't believe David Arquette was here, and like then they were like also like you know blown away by like me being a wrestler. So mm -hmm. it's like. You know, I, we go back to set and then like they're like bragging to like Cedric, to, like, yo, like you gotta check it out. And it was funny because like uh this was at the time where like AEW I think first started getting TV and first started kind of blowing up like mm -hmm. you know to everybody and they were like, Yo, you gotta get on this AEW stuff and I'm just like, Yeah, no, I want to like <laughs> so yeah. it, it was funny and like now like they, we still follow each other on social media and it's like when I got announced for AEW, they were just like, yo, what's up? Like, like kind of gave me props. That's for that. so that cool. Oh, I love that. So being a performer yourself, but then also working like behind the scenes on all these shows and stuff, like what kind of inspiration were you able to draw from sitting? I know those are like long kind of boring days, but when you're like kind of watching those people work and like the who's who work, were you able to like pull some inspiration from some of that? Um, not really i, I don't no. know i guess like like it just like knowing that anything is possible like you i kind of like i feel like i know how to make most things with less so it's like whether it be like uh set designing or like prop building stuff like that like there's always a way to do something without like without a budget sure. like for, for instance the other day I, I had to make like a like a sponsored video for somebody and i was like i need to make this look cool and it's just like in the middle of my basement i just took like uh this old china cabinet i have and then like an old card table and i put some like led lights into it and it's like there was like where were you like it looks like a western like saloon i'm like oh, i was just in my basement like so it's like you know you just make it work with whatever because you have to be on the fly and like you mm -hmm. have to make things work quickly in in the movie industry um, in the wrestling industry, 
set wise, what are some things that you would like to spice up? Are the things on like the the main set, like from like the tunnels that you walk out, something there that you think could look really cool, or even on like the backstage set? Are those conversations that you've had at all um, with Tony? Uh, no, not really. I mean, like I feel like you know stuff like like the fan fest and stuff. I feel like we can really there's a lot of room for improvement there, just to like give the fans a better experience of like not just having like concrete walls and stuff. I feel like you know pipe and drape goes a long ways and you know sure. filling filling the empty space uh you know if there's just like a wrestling ring in the middle of a giant room it helps a lot yeah but uh, you know i think like for the for the themed shows we, i know we've done it a couple times but like um you know for shark week we had the giant shark cage and there was like mm -hmm. some like aquatic stuff like on the stage I, I feel like you know for the theme shows we could do more stuff like that that yeah. isn't that have been it kind of just it just adds something else to look at and something else to like be like oh that's different like i feel like you need to have like two contracts i feel like you need to have like the pro wrestler contract but then also like on like the set design team <laughs> i mean get, get the man paid i'm open yeah let's do the damn thing um okay so you're in the hardcore music scene um that started pretty early on for you, you said like you know 96 97 98 somewhere in there yeah um you're a third generation set designer lighting all of that when did pro wrestling sort of make its way into your world uh when i was 26 years old okay uh, okay so basically uh i was doing set lighting i was touring with my band you know i was making good money but i didn't like love my job uh you know at the end of the day it's like you said it's long hours very physical uh it's in a nutshell, it's basically just construction. It's the thankless but, job too, it, right? It's like, it, yeah. And which is like, you know, going to that is, I feel like every crew guy, when I'm like walking out, I I try to thank like all of them that I walk by and they all just look at me like, was he talking to me? It's just like, I feel like <laughs> you're just, they're not used to that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just want them to know, like, I've been on this side. I know how it is. Like mm -hmm. you guys are doing a great job. And I feel like, uh a lot of uh my peers maybe don't think about that on a daily basis like sure and you know with the amount of money that we were able to make like i mean scott the sky's the limit really with a pro wrestler it's like these guys are making you know a, a normal living wage and like working their asses off and they're there before we're there and they're after we're there so it's yeah. like they definitely deserve more praise, I feel and like. And it's not like their local crew that's hired, right? These are guys that are still traveling the same as everybody else's. They're away from their family. I mean, yes, sometimes there is local crew brought in there, obviously. But, like, a lot of times it's like those those behind-the-scenes crew people are, yeah, they're traveling the same grueling schedule that everybody else is. Yeah, and it's like, you know, these are the guys that, you know, in the heat of the moment you're barking orders at, and then they just make it happen. So it's like, yeah. You know, give a give a little thank you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, for real, give a little love to those guys. So, uh, so yeah, I was I was doing set lighting, not really loving my job. Um, I was with my wife. We've been together for almost eleven years now. Hell yeah! Uh, so you know, she kind of was with me through the whole thing. Um, I started set lighting when I was eighteen, so it's like I started very young mm -hmm. and making adult money when you're very young is not always the best thing. And I, I, right. I think that a lot of pro wrestlers can vouch for that as well. It's like, you're just kind of a shithead. You think, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And like you burn a lot of bridges. And then like when you move out of your parents' house and you get real bills and then you're like, Oh fuck. Like the phone's not ringing as much as it should be. Yeah. Uh, I need to, I need to start, you know, making amends and, and putting my head to the grindstone. And yeah. that's kind of what I did. And I feel like around like 24 is when I started to figure it out. And so when I got like more serious with my job and like, that's lucky. I feel like that's still pretty early on to like get that reality check. But like you said, you started at 18. So you still have some years under your belt to like check yourself. Yeah. And, and luckily, you know, my dad had like such a uh, respected name in the business and like, I felt like for a couple of years, I was definitely tarnishing that his legacy, but you know, I, I, I feel like most people realize, you know, you're just a kid, you're figuring it out. You'll get yeah. there or you won't. Um, and I feel like that goes with most things in life. You either get there or you don't. And it, yeah. you know, you just have to make that choice on your own. 
so I started like figuring it out. Um, I bought a house and like we were doing great. And then I was just, my one of my friends started. Uh, he his girlfriend was an in arena host for the L.A. Kings. Okay. And there was an old pro wrestler that was like a mega Kings fan. And she knew that her boyfriend. Is, it, like, is this Carlin? It is Carlin. Yeah. Oh, love her. What oh, a I, dream I, boat that chick is. Yeah. Big fan. So, so Carlin's doing in arena hosting. She meets this older wrestler and he was like, basically, Hey, if, if your boyfriend wants to, you know, run the ropes, take a bump, whatever I can, I know a school that I can take him to. And, uh, her boyfriend, Colin, is my best friend. Okay. So one day, I he's posting photos of him running the ropes, and I'm like, what? How, like, how are you doing this? It's like, <laughs> pro wrestling was, like, probably my first love. Like, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, He-Man, and pro wrestling. That was, like... <laughs> uh, so, it's, like, I, I always used to say, like, I wanted to be a pro wrestler when I grew up. Like, when I was in high school or junior high, people would be talking about whatever. And I'm, like, I want to be a pro wrestler. It's like, But I never knew the steps to take to get there. I didn't know right. the pro wrestling schools. And then, like, you know, when you kind of start to grow up, like, that kind of goes to the back of your mind. And mm-hmm. you don't think about it as much. Uh, but that, like, kind of sparked an interest. I was just like, well, I, I want to try this just to try it. Like, like you said, you know, hardcore music is so physical that I felt like, you know, this is going to be easy. Like, it's not going to be like as jarring as a, a, you know, a normal wrestling fan who's never done anything physical goes into wrestling school and they're like, oh boy, what have I got myself into? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we went to the our local wrestling show. Uh, it was Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy, and uh, they were having a student showcase. And the next day I signed up for their beginners class. Oh my gosh. I, so this is actually like, I love doing this podcast because I love hearing these stories. Cause it really is that thing. I think like when you think of like the base of it, of like, Oh, I want to be a pro wrestler, but like how the hell does somebody actually accomplish that? If it's not a thing that's right in front of you and tracking down the schools and then like actually putting in the work to do that, it's not this hobbyist kind of thing. You're like really seeking that out I find that really fascinating of like what those first steps are that first day taking that first bump finding the first person that like really took you under their wing like I find all that stuff so fascinating yeah so my pro wrestling experience was I feel like very old school uh my trainer Joey Chaos like he never wants to put out uh, a product that isn't you know ready to do an entire match they can't call a match call on the fly stuff like that Mm -hmm. um so my pro wrestling training was about a year and a half before I had my first match. And even then I, I felt like I wasn't ready. So it's like, you know, I know that there's a lot of kids that go to like these like three month schools or whatever. And then they're like working on TV. I'm like, Oh boy, I would have been scared shitless. Like, I don't know how you guys, but that stresses me out and I don't wrestle. I'm like, what's happening here? (laughs) Uh, but yeah, those first days were like definitely eye opening. Uh, you know, obviously the cardio, the physicality, like the physicality was fine. Like as far mm-hmm. as like taking chops, forearms, bumping, like stuff like that. I've done that forever. Like you said, I'm getting hit in the in a yeah. mosh. Oh my god! Dive, diving off to a uh, off a stage and nobody. It's like yeah, yeah I'll take a your ball. ass kicked. <laughs> so it's, it's like we started like learning dives. Like my lucha coach was like, "Hey, who wants to try it first? And I was like, "Oh, I'll do it." I just did like a toe pick on heel, like a flip dive over the top, like right away. He's like, how do you know how to do this? And like, we started talking and it turns out that my Lucha coach was actually like in hardcore bands. And then like, it was like, I knew that was such a transferable skill. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, I I mean, I didn't at the time. And then it's like, obviously in pro wrestling, but it's like almost everything that I do in pro wrestling is is because of hardcore music like the intensity the physicality like the selling yourself as a professional like all these things i learned from punk and hardcore music so that those lessons were truly invaluable and i didn't realize at the time that i was you know learning these things that were going to like set me up kind of for the rest of my life Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's so funny how like certain things like it's almost like the seeds are like planted and then it all just kind of comes together like in that big like Oprah aha moment. 